Hello and welcome to another video from salesbrook.com. In this video we shall be looking at Thermaltake's Level 10 GTS computer case. The Level 10 GTS is the third member of the Level 10 lineup with the previous releases being the original Level 10 designed by BMW Designworks and that was followed by the Level 10 GT. All three of them share similar design elements that gives them the distinctive Level 10 outline. The case comes in a colorfully printed box that yells out look at me at shop displays and retail demos etc. The package comes well packed with styrofoam packaging and synthetic fabric cover. Once unboxed, from the get-go we can see that this case has been designed leaning towards function over aesthetics. Whatever we can see exists to serve some kind of purpose. Personally this is a design philosophy that I much prefer. Beauty or other novelty factors can wear off, functionality remains the same. Starting down from the top right corner, there are two USB 3 ports which has internal header, next mic and headphone connectors, then two USB 2 ports and below them are the power and reset button and power and hard disk activity LEDs. In the middle from the top there are four 5 and a quarter drive bays, then the 3.5 inch bay, next to it is a cylindrical keyhole for the hot swap bay lock. And at the left side below that are the four buttons that releases the hard drive trays in order for them to be pulled out. The five and a quarter inch bay covers can be removed from the front and behind each cover is a foam filter. The three and a half inch bay covers offer the same features as well. The front panel removes rather easily, simply hold from the top and pull from the bottom and off it comes. Which reveals the 200 millimeter blue LED fan. The air intake is filtered by a removable dust filter. The top panel has provision for a 200mm fan or 220mm fans, though none of these are included. The screw holes for 200mm fan has rubber inserts. The left side panel has an adjustable headphone holder. The panel also has room for an optional 200mm, 140mm or 120mm fan. This position is filtered as well, though the rubber insert is present for only 200 or 140 mm positions. Next, there are the four bays for the hot swap hard drive. The tray slides out by pressing the corresponding release button from the front and pulling the tray out at the same time. In the inside, we can see that the connections for the hard drives, data and the power is already present. Collectively this feature can allow the user to perhaps set up a file server or a NAS or perhaps just RAID. These aspects are also governed by the capability of the motherboard used. The tray itself has rubber padding for the 3.5 inch drives though not for the 2.5 inch ones, hoping that one would only mount an SSD which by its nature does not vibrate. The right side panel is dented outwards far enough to give the cavity behind the motherboard's tray generous volume for cable management, a feature that majority of decent cases will boast these days. The left side panel is somewhat unusual in the sense that it is like a big L. Both side panels are secured with thumb screws that are retained. As mentioned earlier, there is the filter for the fan from the inside. The accessories include a manual, a Molex to 3 pin cable, good quantity of various screws, some reusable cable ties and a buzzer. The top panel filter can be removed from the inside but the process is not straightforward. The bottom filter however easily slides out from the back and it runs the length needed to cover all the air intake. The five and a quarter inch bay drives are locked into position using the two free clips. Though they seem a little bit weak for the job, once installed they are quite adequate. There is room for another three and a half inch drive in the middle to be mounted with screws. The connectors, thankfully in this case, is down to minimum. Three pin for the fans, standard connections for the front panel, USB 2, USB 3 and HD audio. The motherboard tray has a large cutout and plenty of holes for cable to pass through and these holes have rubber grommets. There is one SATA power connector for all four hot swap drives. 
Also, the data ports are right next to the power cable, but no soldered cables are provided. The rear panel has three holes for water cooling tubes. The key was provided hanging next to them. A 120 mm turbo fan is included at the rear exhaust. Seven expansion port, each of which is secured using a thumb screw. The chassis itself is constructed out of approximately 1 mm thick sheet, which is not the heaviest of material that cases are built with. Installing all components were simple and straightforward even. At no stage did I need to squeeze my hands to do anything, there was plenty of room to work. Since all the cable from the power supply can be immediately routed behind the motherboard tray, there is ample room for the 120mm fan. At the top there was ample clearance for a thick radiator, though with the optical drive installed at the top bay, it was cutting a bit too close into the space for the second 120mm fan. At the reverse side, while there was good amount of space for a bunch of cable, the motherboard tray was rather plain. There is very little in the way of cable tie attachment points. This led to most of the cable to gather together at the center. The large cutout made the installation of CPU retention plate rather easy. Overall, this is a case that provokes mixed opinion. It lives in the shadow of its predecessor, the legendary level 10. Yet, a severe cost-cutting exercise left the GTS a little bit too lean. On the bright side, this makes a good choice for those who wish to make a file server on a tight budget, or perhaps a gaming system. There is nothing to say that the finished product is doomed. Far from it. There is ample options for cooling, dust filters are provided already. If you do not care for the bells and whistles such as fan controller, color shift fan, or perhaps perspex window, and all you care about is functionality, this case is worthy of consideration. It all makes sense when we consider the cost, which is about half as much as level 10 GT. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Your comments and suggestions are most welcome. Hope to see you next time. Bye for now.